SnapDeck IT is the expert go-to resource for all things CMMC, education, certification, preparation, and ongoing managed IT. Manage, secure, grow. Check it out at snaptechit.com. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla. I'll be your host, and our guest is Carl Bickbor. Hello, Carl. Welcome back. Hi, hey Dana. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Today we have a topic that I think is going to be interesting to people, maybe a little scary, but so zero click attack. We're going to talk about what that is. And our first question is going to be, what is a zero click attack? Oh, okay. Well, so uh, zero click attacks, uh, well, there's a lot of zero phrases going around these days. We talk yeah. about zero trust, zero trust architecture. Here's the concept of the zero click attack. And so I think a lot of folks are now becoming aware that, hey, you have to be careful about emails that you click on. You have to be careful about a website and what search result you click on or what ad you might click on or what pop up on your computer you click on. Uh, because sometimes that act of clicking is initiating some type of authority or control that allows something to do something on your computer that, you know, you don't want it to do. Maybe it comes up and says, do you want to do this? And you say, yes, mm -hmm. uh, that would be giving it permission. A zero click attack is one that happens kind of behind the scenes that you're not aware of without any interaction. And so you didn't do anything other than uh, maybe there's a hygiene problem or a reason. And that attack has found its way to your your smartphone or your computer device, whatever it may be, and it's begin to initiate even without you clicking on something. See, this is when everybody just throws their hands up in the air and they're like, oh my goodness, there's nothing we can do to stop this stuff. Yeah. Well, the, the good news is there is something you can do. Maybe you can't stop everything under every circumstance and that's why you always need to be prepared for how to respond. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is, is there are some pretty basic things that if you take care of, these are not likely to come your way very often and they're not likely to go very far if they do. Okay, that's a good answer. Okay, yeah. so here's our next one. Are there any warning signs at all that would indicate your business is being hacked in this way? Well, it's a funny thing. I think more than anything, it's about being um, suspicious in your mind when things behave differently and recognizing like, I just clicked that application and I gave it my username and password and my multi-factor and then it presented me with the login screen again. Why did it just do that? Um, when things behave differently than you expect, even on a mobile device, sometimes they're getting super busy doing something and they start to actually heat up. They're like, it's doing something in the background. Now, that can happen for normal reasons, too. So it doesn't always mean you're being hacked if that happens. But sometimes things churn and just behave differently than normal. And that indicates that your computer is doing something or your phone is doing something, which could indicate that it's bad guys in, in the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, the key thing is, is you're not going to be aware of it. And it's about being suspicious when things behave differently than usual or in an unexpected way. Okay. Suspicion. Okay. So how do businesses need to think about attack infiltrating networks through external devices? Well, I think the first thing is, is you have to remember that the concept of like, you know, if I go into my office and I'm now behind the firewall, that theoretically that now means that I've you know, got this thing protecting every piece of traffic that might find its way into the network. But the reality of it is, is the, the idea of the firewall being the line of what can get in and out of your, your business is not true anymore. People bring in mobile devices, they plug them in, they can tether. You can find Wi-Fi in odd places. You can get access to data through ways that have been not available in the past. And so this like a whole concept of it just, you know, if once it's behind my firewall, I'm safe, it's not good. I think you should be thinking about the security, both on the external side of your company with data and people and people working from home, but also inside your company. There is no line anymore that you shouldn't be thinking about protecting and having good practices, good um, uh, cyber hygiene, and also uh, detection tools in place for. So this means more monitoring of even smartwatches because if there's certain apps that are running on their device that then run on their, so there's more to keep track of. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, so many of us in small businesses um, have understood the concept of basic protection of you put a firewall in place, you install an antivirus, you put somebody in a security group that doesn't have permission to some file those are all great protection. You, you back up the data and you put it aside somewhere to protect it, right? Um, what so many are missing is really is detection uh, because uh, when somebody's uh, 
dwelling within your network and looking around or, or trying to get access to things or maybe try to exfiltrate your data out to, to put it somewhere where it's, it doesn't belong, um, they are almost always evading your protection. Uh, I mean, that, that's just the nature of it. And people feel like, well, I've, I've paid for my backup and I got somebody who's got my antivirus installed. They think I've done the things that it is. The reality of it is, is just like your home, you can have a great alarm system. You can lock your doors. You can do all these protection things. But ultimately, you still need the alarm system that tells you somebody just walked through this room at a time they shouldn't have, right? And that's the same thing from a computer perspective. The, how would you ever know a zero click is happening? Well, you would have to have detection in place. And because a zero click by its very nature found an exploit or found some way of getting into your environment through some vulnerability or, or some process that some door that was left open, you know, it's, it, figuratively. And you have no idea of knowing that they're there unless you've got some type of monitoring that does actual detection. We're not talking about like monitoring your computer resources and, and things like that. We're talking about threat detection, security-based tools that log and analyze the traffic, where it's going to, where it's from, and looking for anomalous behavioral patterns in the data. Okay. That was a good explanation. Very good. <laughs> All right. So what are common app and operating systems are leveraged for zero-click attacks? Well, you know, there's a it, it, you know, the answer is actually, you know, what are people using and um, wh how ubiquitous, how, wh where is it? Uh, and, uh, um, you know, how likely is it for somebody to have some vulnerability or some problem with it? So it's all the usual suspects, like, you know, an Android phone or an iPhone that's out of date um, or a, uh, a, you know, a firewall that doesn't have the latest firmware. It really does come down to things like uh, patching and vulnerability management. But, you know, WhatsApp. Uh, you know, uh, iMessage is a great way to, to find ways into things. Uh, you know, uh, any apps that provide messaging or voice capabilities can commonly be used to find their way into an environment. And, and you know, once they're finding their way in from a phone, for instance, uh, and that phone is now connected to your Wi-Fi, they could be finding their way in through that app into your company's network, as an example. Hmm. So that's something I never thought about was the apps. And now you got to watch those people your employees have on devices too. Yeah. Well, it's also, so, you know, we can immediately jump to the, how do you, how do you mitigate that? Right. I mean, cause there's no hard and fast warnings, right. As they say they, um, but you can do things like, well, don't allow personal cell phones on your Wi-Fi network that, that way that eliminates those apps. Or if you do put them in a segmented network that can't touch anything else, that way it can't spread. You know, there's, there's things you can do to mitigate this It's actually, by the way, it's pretty normal best practices. It's just shockingly often not done. Right. And and one, because people don't necessarily know how or they just for some reason, whoever is implementing didn't really have security in mind when they were doing it. They were maybe keeping it simpler or more, uh, you know, just just more streamlined. And, but the problem with that is, is you you're introducing security vulnerability when you don't implement things like that with segmentation and with detection, as an example. So guest Wi-Fi. That, that, that was yeah. Thing. yeah, guess Wi-Fi that's legitimately separated, as an example, would be a way that you would keep your phones from doing that. And you don't ever put your phones on your internal Wi-Fi. You put them on the guest only, mm -hmm. as, as an example. That's a great, great tip. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fun. Everybody gets, get, get a guest Wi-Fi. Okay, so if there are no hard and fast warning signs that a zero-click attack is in progress, what are the best practices that DOD contractors can implement to minimize risk from attacks? Well, so, you know, I feel like in a lot of ways we, re we really repeat ourselves with the fundamentals and basics, but there's a reason why is because most organizations we come across, they're missing some basic function that they should be doing, right? So the basics are patch management, mm -hmm. you're patching operating system, you're patching browsers, you're uh, patching phones, you're patching applications, you're doing the patching and vulnerability management you need to, Scan scanning for vulnerabilities having a hardening posture to your network where you segment traffic. Like you put your IOT devices, like, you know, programmable thermostats or smart boards or um, people's own Wi-Fi into segmented networks that can't talk to other things. There's just no reason your smart board needs to be able to talk to your server typically, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's just, how, how can you create this segmentation to provide walls or barriers to things spreading around if something becomes compromised right mm -hmm. uh and, and then and then it comes down to putting in meaningful threat detection you need some type of managed detection response mdr you probably need some type of sim like if you're in the dod space um sim threat detection threat intelligence 
These are bare minimum requirements. You need to have log shipping, uh, all these tools that can do this, that can help you know that somebody's lurking around that's coming from a place that they shouldn't be, uh, that's anomalous or strange or, you know, or, or even basic things like, hey, somebody just logged into this mailbox from Brazil. That's not right. Are they in Brazil? No, they're not. Well, why would they be logging in from Brazil? Only a detection tool would tell you that okay. as an example. Okay. Well, at least there is stuff out there that you, that you can. It's just like you said, it's it's an organization not knowing that there is something missing in their in their protection. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or even just fundamentally not understanding the difference between protection and detection and realizing that mm -hmm. very few organizations have made the journey into detection yet. It began in our industry in banking in a meaningful way. And the United States government has a lot of great things within the Department of Defense and other areas that, where they built out detection technologies. But it's now really commonly available, even for a small business on a budget a small business can afford to put detection in place. And it involves, you know, log analysis, it involves additional security tools, but it also involves a human element to interpret that data because it could be, hey, this is weird, but that's normal IT stuff happening, or no, this is weird, but that's bad people doing stuff. You sometimes really have to interpret that data to make sure you know exactly what's going on because they hide very well. Like I said, there was no click involved. There's no user to say, hey, I clicked on this thing and my screen turned red and it started demanding ransom. That's really bad stuff, but it's obvious where that came from at first, yeah, you know, right. the zero click attacks um, are all about finding things that's lurking. And, you know, the average dwell time of an attacker and environment once they get in is many, many, many days. I've heard stats of 45 days. I've heard stats up to 90 days wow. that they're lurking with access to an environment before they do anything about it. They're just learning and growing and spreading. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact st stats, so don't quote on me, but I guarantee you it's a lengthy, shockingly long amount of time that they're lurking around, not caught because there's no detection in place. Creepy, creepy, creepy. <laughs> yeah, creepy. Creepy right. indeed. It, well, it's definitely a threat is yeah. what it is. It's a threat. All right. So what tools do you recommend that DOD contractors take to minimize the risk of a zero-click attack? Well, so, uh, you know, beyond segmentation of just having a guest Wi-Fi, I like the the buzzword that I begin with of the zero trust architecture, taking a zero trust approach. I think that it's a more comprehensive protection. It's still not detection like we were talking about. So if you don't have anything detecting in your network or on your systems, you need detection. You need a SIM, you need an MDR, you need some of these things that are out there to help you with detection. But, uh, you know, Setting aside that, I like the idea of taking the approach that whether they're in your network, out of your network, working at home, nothing is trusted, zero trust. That means you know, like on a computer system, you set up a computer with a tool that makes sure absolutely nothing can execute except what is expressly a permitted rather than what is demon. And we've talked about this in the past with application control. That's yes. an example of how you do zero trust. That way, you know, if somebody's lurking around and tries to get to this computer equipment through some vulnerability in, you know, WhatsApp or whatever the thing is that they found their way, when they get to that computer, that computer will say, OK, I'm receiving this script that's telling me to do something. But you know what? That's not on my list. Not allowed. Even though it's not going to trigger the antivirus program to say, hey, this is a virus because their command actually didn't involve a virus. They're just sending normal commands of IT things to do to take control to get access to data. And so you have to be able to deny things that could be totally normal. Mm -hmm. And so um, zero trust, I think, is a big deal. I think um, uh, having detection like MDR or managed detection and response in place is, help, is, is a big helpful thing. And, and then tying that together with a logging tool, like a security information event monitor, a SIM tool, as we say, uh, putting that combo together is pretty effective. And then the last thing, though, just to throw out, is just you can never um, you, you can never uh, downplay the need to mitigate vulnerabilities uh, either. And I would say probably half of them are through just bad configurations and half of them are through patches that you need to do. And so, like, if you're leaving insecure protocols running on all your computers that can be accessed from anywhere, that's a bad configuration. If you uh, ha have a bunch of apps that are super dangerous and not patched, well, that's vulnerability needs to be patched, right? Both of the, just vulnerability management is an underserved area in small businesses, in my opinion. So those are the, you know, that's a lot to think about, but that's, that's it. You know, it's like zero trust, MDR, vulnerability management, 
uh, zero trust can mean zero network access, so ZTNAs, uh, zero, zero network trust access, uh, or the, uh, zero trust networking access, thank you, or uh, application control and um, just generally having that posture that nothing is trusted no matter where it's located, in our network or out. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, this was good stuff here. So any additional parting thoughts you'd like to share? Um, well, you know, I, I think that uh, um, it's a lot to think about. And so when you think about where to start in preventing these things, I would say, you know, start with planning because there's comprehensiveness necessary to this. Um, and, uh, you know, just as a, you know, the shameless plug, we do provide a lot of great resources on our website snaptechit.com slash resources where you can read up and, and, and watch videos like this one or watch, um, uh, you know, other ones where we've done on topics where you can learn about this. I think sometimes you just got to educate yourself first. We try to really put out a lot of great, meaningful content that people can dig into to understand these security topics better. So snaptechit.com slash resources. Uh, you can always reach out to us on LinkedIn or through email as well. And we're happy to answer questions. Um, and, and just do the research and make sure you're you're taking a comprehensive planned approach as opposed to like, you know, you might say, well, I don't have MDR. I'll go get MDR. OK, well, you solved that. But did it really play into a greater thing? There might be other things that you also need to put in combination with that. So it's not about just doing one thing to solve your problem. There, or, or in other words, there's no silver bullet. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. I encourage people to 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 get expert planning, expert resources and to educate themselves. Uh, that would be the, the other point. And Carl, I have to tell you, as always, you do a very good job of explaining this so that regular people can understand. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I try, you know, look, that's what I spend most of my time doing is talking to business owners that are not tech people. They might be great lawyers. They might be great manufacturers, great general managers, great even IT people. But uh, uh, if I can't communicate in a way that they understand, I should didn't, why would I bother? You know, so I try. Thank you, Dana. Yes, no, you, you do a great job. So thank you again for coming on and doing our lovely presentation on this. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And we hope to see you on the next episode of 123 CMMC. Thanks, Bye -bye. Dana. Yeah.